Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. So I've recently got back on the maintenance and support bandwagon with SolidWorks. So I've got 2021 installed and I have 2022 waiting to get installed. So I'm just, I, I thought I'd explore some of the features that have changed since 2017 and one of them is the G3 constraint in the sketcher. So I thought I'd so over here on the alias workbench is a great resource. Anybody wants to look into what all the different theory behind curves and curvature and what have you are so up until i don't know when they introduced the uh, g3 constraint it wasn't in 2017 so you could have a, a curvature continuous or a g2 continuity uh constraint in your sketch and now you have g3 i'm not going to go into detail about what that means like constant acceleration of curvature etc you can research that yourself um but basically in the plots that's the difference you get. So up until now, G2 curvature, you sort of have a kink. The lines, your curvature graph lines meet the same point, but they are, they are not tangent. Um, whereas for the G3 plot, they will be tangent. So in 2017, you've been able to emulate, well not, you've been able to make a G3 curvature constraint, but only two lines um, by making the CVs collinear to the line. So right, I'm just going to dive over here. And I have a quick sketch here. I'm just going to sketch over that. Okay, so if I just get these entities, convert them. So I've just made a couple of arcs and set them back with, an arc, uh, with a circle. So in Style Spline, I noticed they've changed this a little bit, but you start with the Bezier curve. I normally start by drawing one, two, three points. Doesn't matter. Um, what degree of curve I'm, I'm looking to use because then I can just adjust it like so. So with a degree 2 curve you have 3 CVs you can make a degree 2 curve tangent uh, to 2 arcs tangent on each end but in this case I'm going to select the control polygon and make that tangent to this other arc. So you've got no flexibility you can't um, have any uh, independent sort of tangent length on each end when using a degree 2 curve, a uh, Bezier curve, um, which is tangent on both ends. So, next one up, if I just delete those constraints, I can go to degree 3. So now you can make a tangent. Tangent, so with a degree 3 curve. Uh, with four CVs, if you have tangency on each end, uh, you can have different tangent length on each end. Um, right, to make that, so it's curvature continuous and each end is independent, you need to have a minimum of six CVs, so we're going to jump up to degree five. So now we can go equal curvature, and you can see that end there. It's only one, two, three CVs that are constrained by the equal curvature. And on this end, we go equal curvature. Again, that's only affecting this end of the spline. Sorry, it's affecting the whole curve, but it's not affecting these CVs. So you can have independent control on each end. Okay, so the next thing is to check out G3. So if I was to just get this degree five spline and make that G3 the torsion continuity that means it's going to take over one two three four points it will be needed like so so you see now this this CV here uh, is constrained uh, as part of the constraint so on this end I've only got one my tangent point basically that I can uh, have working independently from this constraint. So what you want to do, if you want to have independent control on each end, you need to go up to degree seven. Um, so which means you've got um, eight CVs, which means you've got one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, that then get controlled by the G3 constraint. Like so, and so as you can see, if I'm moving that CV around, this one's affected, but these one two, these ones on the other end are not. So if I got
turn my curvature plot on. You can see what I said uh, was saying before on the alias uh, workbench guides. You can see how we have a tangent connection in our curvature cone. This is literally the first thing I've done with um with the G3 constraint in SolidWorks. Yeah, so there you go. It's following through tangent tangentially. Okay, so the next thing I thought be worth trying was maybe adding a um a G3 blend to one of these edges. Um, see what happens. So I'll I'll run something, um, run a pipe up this edge here. So insert surface sweep, circular profile, and say uh, 10 millimeters. And then we need to extend that surface, uh, the pipe out. So it fully uh, intersects these two side faces. Like that. Just check that pipe because the, yeah, okay, looks right. Okay, and then we go insert curve split line intersection. Right click on the surface body, select other, pick the surface body rather than the face. Pick those faces, hide that, and insert face delete. Make sure you're just on straight delete. Get rid of those. Okay, so I just read before that you cannot make a G3 constraint yet in a 3D sketch, so. Uh, I would normally put a 3D sketch across here, so obviously with that limitation I won't be able to do that. Hopefully they introduce uh, the new constraint into 3D sketches at some point. So down the bottom here I'm going to sketch on this bottom plane. Let's make sure our points intersect, yes. Okay, so let's make a style spline. One, two, three points, and then we'll up the point count to a degree seven spline, and we should be able to make G3 torsion continuity on that end, and again on this end. Oh, overdefined, okay. This looks like the fussy old, um, sometimes with curvature continuity, you'd get uh, these over definitions for no apparent reason. Let's just delete the constraint on that end and try this end first. Okay, um, ways around this. Uh, can try converting the entity that we're trying to constrain to. Uh, it's not giving me the option to make it G3. Okay, that's handy. Um, okay, maybe I have to leave the sketch and sketch on the top plane first and then pre-define those entities, convert entities, go okay, enter another sketch, insert, um, on that plane. So I've been here before with uh, this sort of thing going on. One, two, three, okay, and okay, let's see if we can pick that entity and entity and the spline. No, okay, let's try converting those pre-converted entities into this. <laughs> uh, no. Why, why can we do that on one end and not on the other? Um, interesting. Let's try drawing this again. Style spline. Three and and yay. Oh, we're actually making some progress here. Okay. Talk about having to jump through some hopes so anyway. Two 
see if we can make, let's just make these three on the side. No, can't make those collinear. I mean, um, equal. No, can't make those equal. Um, and now it looks like it thinks that fully defined, everything's black, even though it's not fully defined at all. Let's see if we can just add some dimensions. No. Uh, okay. That's very strange. Um, I think I might just uh, stop this video here. Um, obviously this G3 thing's not working for me today uh, on some actual geometry rather than just in a 2D sketch. Um, that's highly frustrating. Seems like it's going to be a fussy uh, feature to try and use in reality. Oh, hang on. No. Um, exit the sketch. Okay, see, it says it's not fully defined because it's got the little dash there. Let's go back into the sketch. See if I can now dimension. No. Okay, uh, so I'm going to wrap that up. There's a few positives there, like the 2D sketch I was showing. Well, this is the 2D sketch, but the sketch I was showing uh, earlier over here. Um, I've got no idea what's going on here. Um, so I might put together a pre-built um, model rather than modeling in front of everybody and getting frustrated. Anyway, thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Have a good day. See ya.